So in this session I'm going to speak about Ether channel or grouping the links or let's say the bundling the links between the switches and the actual reason for that is to have more bandwidth between the two switches here. Uh, as you can see between switch 4 and switch 1 and 2 there are multiple links also the same is uh, true about switch 3. I have two links between a pair of switches and what I am doing here is to utilize more bandwidth between the switches so that I can forward more traffic in a second. Um, this is very popular but uh, if you have very high speed links, we, what we call it uplink ports on switches, you might not really need to have uh, such configuration. But let's say that for example my switches are not so expensive, I do not have high speed link module so what I'm going to do is to make sure that uh, the amount of data that needs to go through the core of my network uh, has enough bandwidth for that so I just use multiple links to create this so multiple links can be up to several links let's say so how can I do that how can I make sure that both of the links are going to be utilized one thing is to create a bundle and this bundle is called a uh, channel group or ether channel there are different names for that and let's go with ether channel and ether channel is something that you know creates the links and make them look like just one link so let's say that for example this is one of my switches and this is another switch that I have here if I have two links between these two I can tell that I have two links one of them for example is past 0, 0, the other one is 0 slash 1 and the same thing here 0 slash 1 for example and this one is 0 slash 0 I have two links between the two switches but what I am doing here is to change this definition and say that these two are a bundle and as a matter of fact what I have here is one virtual link between the two switches now this virtual link actually is utilizing two physical links but we do not really see these physical links anymore what we see is this virtual link and this virtual link is called a port uh, channel uh, link so this port channel link which I just type PO and let's say that for example it has a name PO1 uh, utilizes both these links and makes sure that data is distributed between the two links so that both of them are going to be utilized when I am speaking when I'm going to speak about the uh, spanning tree protocol I will tell you that even if we have multiple links between two switches just one of them is going to be utilized and the others are going to be blocked but port channel makes sure that they are not blocked anymore so uh, this is going to be um, both of them are going to be utilized so one more important thing even if we have multiple links between switches we cannot you know separate one flow into different parts and send each part on one of the links this is not the way port channel works so let's say what is a flow first of all there is a definition for flow and the best definition for flow is this a bunch of packets that have the same source IP and the same destination IP and the same port number again we are going to cover all of them in detail later don't worry about this but let's say that if we have a bunch of packets with the same source destination and port number for example a bunch of packets that you send to a web server or receive an upload from a web server this is going to be a flow now if we have just one connection between the server and the computer we are going to have only one flow and that flow is going to utilize only one of these physical links it is not separable it is not you know uh, divisible between uh, the two links so what we do is to you know create different flows to make sure that each flow goes on one of these links and this way we are using the whole bandwidth that we have created here uh, one thing that is you know used in this kind of uh, balancing is called a load balancing as a matter of fact and load balancing has different uh, algorithms 
you can say that I can use source port or destination port I can use source port or destination IP also I can use source port uh, source sorry source and destination you know MAC address which one is suitable for our purpose let's see so let's say that I have a bunch of computers here they are all connecting to one server so this server has only one IP address one MAC address we are going to try to you know diverse the traffic so here we have multiple IP addresses multiple MAC addresses so if this is my source and this is my destination you see that the destination is only one IP and one MAC I would go with source IP or source MAC or source you know uh, port which one is better let's say that if I have a IP flow so source IP is going to be uh, what I have. If I am sending just layer 2 information, then source MAC is going to be the one to go with. If I am sending, you know, data on different ports, then source port is going to be the good one. So anyway, because I have a lot of, uh, you know, computers here, so source is going to be my, you know, choice. Now, let's say that I have a bunch of computers here. I'm going to, you know, draw this one more time. So let's say that or, or let's say that for example I have one server here and a bunch of computers are connecting here so my server is going to be the source because this has only one IP, one MAC, one port or maybe multiple ports I don't know but one IP or one MAC this is not going to be the good one to choose for the algorithm to distribute the uh, data between different links. So what I'm trying to do is to use destination. So if I have multiple computers here connecting to my server and I'm trying to load balance the links with load balance the flows on, on different links, so I'm going to go with destination. Now if I have a bunch of computers here, a bunch of computers there and they're trying to connect to each other, then source and destination is going to be a good combination. So I'm going to use both of them. So you got the idea, right? you now know what it means. So let's go and create the port channel. So by, by creating the port channel, I can use a different, again, uh, protocols to create it. Exactly like what we had when we were creating trunk links, we have, you know, again, the same thing in creating channel groups. So for channel groups, what I have is let's say a mode on which is statically creating the channel group so I'm just telling the links to go into the group and be part of the group so this is the say mode on or mode static so let's say mode on is the name the second way is to use port aggregation protocol which is PAGP as a matter of fact and PAGP is Cisco specific protocol or we can have link aggregation control protocol which is called LACP this is standard so most of the time you should go with the standard if you have multiple switches from multiple vendors as a matter of fact so you are creating this uh, channel group with uh, different vendors so like I said LACP is going to be a good one PAGP is okay and how can I tell that I am using PAGP or LACP and as a matter of fact I just forgot to say that when you are using PAGP or LACP you are creating uh, links automatically but and with, with on like I said this is kind of a static mode so this is dynamically created on is a statically created if I just choose to have active and passive that's going to be LACP if I choose to have something like desirable and auto that's going to be PHP so based on the choice that we have we are deciding what protocol we are going to create so let's go and create this in action so if I go to my uh, you know topology here I'm going to create first uh, between switch 1 and switch 2 and I'm going to put these into one group 
So let's go to switch one. First of all, I'm going to go here and show CDP neighbor. And you can see that between switch one and switch two, we have Eternal 00 and Eternal 01. So these are separate. You do not see any bundle or something. So I just go to here and I start channeling them to each other. But before doing this, there are some requirements. I need to make sure that these requirements are met. The first thing is, both of them should have the same configuration. Exactly the same configuration. So if Ethernet 00 is in trunk mode, 01 is in access mode, that is not going to work. If one of them is in layer 3, one of them is in layer 2, that's not going to work. Both of them should be either in layer 3 or in layer 2. So now you know that we can create layer 3 bundle as well. So first of all, let's see. Do show running configuration internet interface Ethernet 0 slash 0, also 0 slash 1. And per your vision, both of them are exactly the same. Both of them are in trunk mode. Both of them have the same configuration. Speed on both of them should be the same. Duplex on both of them should be the same. And anything that you can think of, MTU, should be the same. All of them should be the same. And most of the time, that is uh, the case because we just go with defaults. Now that I know this, I just go and add the configuration to both of them. Um, what do you do when creating this? A good um, habit is to, you know, disable the link first on one side. The other side is going to be okay, just one side. Let's say, for example, I switch one side, then create the port channel. And when the other side is created, you can just uh, enable the links again. I'm not going to do that, but if you saw any problem, the only thing you need to do is to disable and enable the links. So what I'm going to do is to go to both of the interfaces. So I just interface, type interface range. Ethernet 00-1, that's going to, you know, include both of the links. And what I'm going to do is to type channel group. And by typing channel group, then it asks me a number. This number can be between 1 to 6, 1 to 255. It doesn't really matter what number you put in. It doesn't have to be the same as the number on the other side of the link. This is locally important. So I just type 1, just because... I'm going to start from the beginning. Like I said, doesn't matter if it matches the other side. It just has to be a number here. And then it says, what is the mode that you are going to use? Like I said, desirable and auto means PHP, passive and active mean LACP, on means I'm creating the Ether channel, whatever, uh, whatsoever. So let's go with on. That's going to be a good one because uh, although this is going to be kind of load of administrate administrative burden that's going to be okay i just type channel group mode on i do not really bother with uh going through uh the the different stages on, on just checking whether the uh link is created or not so now you see that both of the links are up and now let's check this show ip interface brief shows me one new interface as port channel interface here it is up up and if you check the configuration for port channel i would see that this is exactly the same as the configuration of the underlying interfaces so if i show interface trunk i can see that instead of ethernet 01 and 00 i see a port channel which is in trunk mode which is a good sign here if i show ether channel summary i can see that it says ethernet 00 and ethernet 01 is under uh this port channel it is in switch port mode which is layer 2 this s means switch port uh, you can see of course the legend here also it is in u mode which means that it is in use and this is a good port you should not see SD, which is down, for example. You should not see S, whatever. Uh, you should not see them. You should see SU, which means that this is working just fine. Now I need to go to the other side and do the same thing on the other side because both of them should agree on the, uh, the Ether channel, uh, specifically because I just created the Ether channel uh, based on just a static 
uh, decision. So what I'm going to do again is to go to enable mode and first of all let's show CDP neighbor to make sure that the links that I am creating is the same as the other side. So interface range Ethernet 0 slash 0 dash 1. Like I said, you need to make sure that the configuration are the same, but anyway, so because I know that, I just go with channel group, let's say 1 or whatever number that you want to add, and mode is going to be on. That's it. Now you have created the links here. It's going to take some time. And then just for the verification, do show ether channel summary. And it says both of the links are here and it is in SU mode, which means a good thing. So if I show IP interface brief, again, I can see that port channel is here. Now, one thing that is very important is this. Uh, let's go to privilege mode and I'm going to show Ether channel summary and after summary this time I'm going to no, before summary I just want to check to see what kind of load balancing is going to be used for the uh, ether channel so I just type load balance and I see that it says source and destination IP is going to be used now how can you change this if you decided to you know have some other type of uh, load balancing what you need to do is to go to configuration mode and then you're going to type um, port channel load balance and then you decide between these options uh, most of the time source and destination IP is going to be okay if you are using some other uh, type of you know communication like layer 2 communication only then Mac would be a good thing but I guess the source and destination IP is going to be okay, so I'm not going to change this. And that is how you create the uh, channel grouping. Like I said, you can go with dynamic. I'm going to, you know, encourage you to uh, do it yourself. In next session, I'm going to start to talk about spanning tree protocol.